Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to wait one more minute here before we get started with our Payer Academy. As I see, we still have a few more folks that are joining us online. All right, we will go ahead and get started. So thank you again for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Kathy Seifert, and I am a part of the Office in Teaching and Learning uh, Tech Integration Team. And my colleague is Ted Bartnick. So we work together to make this presentation to share with our families um, so that we can ensure our families and our students will have a successful start to the school year. Um, so we're gonna start here with some Chromebook information. So all of our district students will have access to a district Chromebook. And uh, here's our information on how to log into the device. So for our students who are in kindergarten through fifth grade, and also any students who are new to the district, their username to log into the Chromebook is gonna be their six digit ID number. And then their password is gonna be that six digit ID number and their initials. So for example, if the student's name is John Smith and his password is 123456, his username would be 123456, and then his password would be 123456JS. For our middle and high school students, their login information is gonna remain the same as what it was last year. Um, in the event that your student forgot their password, if you contact the help desk, they will be able to reset that password for you and that number is 708-367-2930. Um, I also wanna note before I go any further that we are gonna share this presentation, uh, a hard copy on our uh, district website and also the recording as well so that you can go back and reference this at any time that you need. I've got a short video here to share with you on how you can connect your district Chromebook to Wi-Fi once you take it home. All right, so once you are logged into the Chromebook and once you are connected to the internet, we have a new feature this year to make accessing all of our different apps and websites so much easier for students and we're very excited about it. Um, so once you're logged in, you're gonna click the Chrome icon here to open the internet. And previously it would take students to the school district homepage. Now your students are gonna see a page similar to what you see here in the image. Uh, this is a service that we have that's called ClassLink. ClassLink is gonna contain uh, links 
to the websites and apps that your student frequently uses. And the nice thing about ClassLink is that the teachers can customize it. So based on what grade your student is, is your student is in, excuse me, this is going to be customized um, to meet their needs. Just another um, piece here for navigating on the Chromebook. In addition to ClassLink, um, because we're using Chromebooks and we're using Google Chrome as our internet browser, the students have access to this icon here in the upper right that we call the waffle. And when they click on the waffle, it's gonna give them access to all of their Google apps. So things like Classroom, Docs, Drive, Calendar, those are some of the apps that students are going to use frequently. And when you click on one of these apps, it's going to open that in a new tab. So monitoring of devices. So these are district owned devices, which means that they are monitored constantly by the district, even when they are at home and connected to a home Wi-Fi. Um, the district has access to see websites, emails, docs, pictures, videos, anything that the student is doing on their computer. We have a filtering service as well. So this filtering service is gonna block out inappropriate content. And again, that filtering service works whether they are at school or whether they are at home. Um, please note that any students who do attempt to access inappropriate content may be subject to disciplinary action by the building administrators. And then we also have a really great tool for our teachers that's called GoGuardian that we're gonna talk about a little bit later on that teachers use to ensure students stay on task, um, they can communicate and also redirect them when needed. I included a link here for our Chromebook handbook. And again, we're gonna share this presentation on our district website. So you'll be able to go back if you need to uh, review these links or watch any of the videos again. Um, but this is a good document just to read over to make sure that you and your student are familiar with. So in terms of device care, um, please ensure that food and drink are not near the Chromebook, especially any liquids. Those are not going to be the Chromebook's best friend. Uh, cords, cables, anything that's getting plugged in, make sure that we are plugging those things in carefully and we're also being careful when we take those out of the device. Um, we never want students to carry the Chromebook when the screen is open because you could damage the screen that way. So please make sure that that is closed all the way when the device is not in use. And then also shut the Chromebook down when it's not in use. That will help save the battery life. Um, you also don't want to expose the Chromebook to extreme heat or cold for long periods of time because that could damage the device. Continuing on here with device care, uh, never lean on top of the Chromebook as that could damage the screen and don't put anything on top of it as well. Um, don't put anything on the keyboard. So it's not good practice to put a pen or a pencil here because you could close the lid without realizing that was there. And again, that can crack the screen. And again, for storing the Chromebook, you're gonna wanna store that on a table, on a desk, bookshelf, but not on the floor so that it won't get stepped on. And then in terms of cleaning the device, uh, particularly cleaning the screen, you're going to want to use a soft anti-static or microfiber cloth. Um, do not use any sort of window cleaner like Windex or any sort of liquid that's not going to be good for the device. If at any point during the school year, the device is not working properly or something is broken, you're going to call the help desk. And again, that number is 708-367-2930. Um, you can speak to them on the phone. There are some issues that they can fix remotely. And then if they determine that there is further action needed, they can let you know what those next steps are. All right, so let's talk remote learning. So remote learning just allows our students and teachers to remain connected and engaged with curriculum while working from home. Um, and again, all of our district students will have access to a Chromebook and through that Chromebook, they can access their curriculum and also their teachers. Um, our school day, you can see here, we have this broken down by the different buildings in the district, but we are going to be maintaining normal school hours just as if we were in person for remote learning. 
Teachers will be taking attendance each day through Skyward Family Access, just like we would if we were in the classroom, and traditional grades will be assigned for work completion. Each school is going to have their own schedule that students follow, so make sure that you check your school website so you know what that schedule is for that particular building. And if a student is not going to be in attendance for a remote learning day, uh, they still need to call in and report that absence to the school office. All right, um, for special education and related services, those students will continue to receive their accommodations. Uh, teachers have the ability to modify and differentiate things through Google Classroom, which is great. And then if your student receives related service, so if they see the social worker, the speech pathologist or occupational therapist, those providers are able to continue providing their services to students whether it's in a one-on-one -on -one setting or in a small group through our tools uh, such as GoGuardian or Google Meet. Just some tips here for making remote learning successful for your student. It's important that they maintain a normal school routine just as if they were gonna get up and go to the school building. So make sure that Chromebook is charged every single night so when they wake up that Chromebook is charged and can last them throughout the entire school day. Make sure that they're getting enough sleep and that in the morning they're eating a good breakfast, brushing their teeth, and again, getting dressed even though they're going to be learning from home. Have a designated spot in your home for remote learning with any necessary supplies that they may need because they may need things other than their Chromebook. It may be helpful to have paper, pencil to jot things down as they are learning remotely. And then also have an after school routine that includes some free time from them away from the computer, away from the screen and some chores as well. And on the parent end, what you can do is you can check Skyward regularly for their grades and also their attendance. Um, we have a feature here with Google Classroom we're going to talk about in a minute that's called Guardian Summaries. That's a good way for you to stay in the loop of what's happening in your child's Google Classroom. And then also I just want to encourage you once you do get that Chromebook that you do sit down with your child and you just explore Google Classroom so that you have an understanding of what they're seeing when they're logging in each day um, and what their assignments might look like. Okay, so Skyward Family Access is our grade book. Um, also our attendance is on there. So if you are not familiar with this and you need your username and password to log into this, you're gonna contact your child's school and these are the phone numbers here for the school office. They will be able to give you that contact information. And Skyward Family Access, this is accessible from our district website under the Four Parents menu. So if you go to Four Parents and then Family Access, it will direct you to the login. Um, I do have a short video here. Um, this I did borrow this from another school district, but this just shows you a breakdown of what the gradebook will look like when you log in to Skyward. <laughs>
I also want to note that our middle and high school students have student access to Skyward. And so we do encourage both parents and students to check grades on a regular basis so they know where they stand with all their classes. All right, now we're going to get into Google Classroom. So Google Classroom is our district's learning management system that teachers will use to push out curriculum, materials, announcements, everything. And to access Classroom, again, going back to that ClassLink homepage that will open up when you open the internet, you're gonna look for the Google Classroom icon. When you click the Google Classroom icon, it's gonna take you to a homepage here, and you may find that your students have already been added to some of their different classes. And again, this is gonna look different um, going from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade. Middle and high school students are gonna have a separate class for each of their separate teachers. Additionally, students may be invited to join a classroom by a teacher, particularly if it's for uh, a small group or some of those related services. So if you do see an option to join a class here, the student would just need to click that blue button to join the class. All right, so we talked about guardian summaries previously. So guardian summaries is a feature that teachers can turn on in their Google Classroom. And for the parents to have access to this, you simply need to provide your email address to your child's teacher. Once your email is added, you will receive an email to confirm that you are enrolling in guardian summaries and then set any preferences. These email summaries don't include grades. So again, for grades, you're gonna to wanna to refer back to Skyward to check your student grades. But the email summaries are gonna show if there's any missing work for your student, any work that's coming up that's going to be due, and then class activities, so announcements. Um, and so this is a really powerful tool for the teachers. They don't have to do anything other than add your email to the account, and then Google Classroom does the rest in terms of sending those emails to parents. So this is just a really nice way to help keep you in the loop of what's happening in your child's classroom. And here's just a snapshot of what a sample guardian summary would look like. So this is what would come to your email once a week. So you see here, there's some missing work and it just has the uh, title of the assignment and then the, the description that the teacher added there as well, along with the date that the assignment was due. So getting into what Google Classroom looks like, um, this is the home screen that you would see when you enter a specific classroom. So here in the upper left-hand corner where you see the three lines, that's your main menu. And when you click there, it, you'll have access to switch between different classes, the calendar, and also the settings for the classroom. The default is gonna take you to the stream, which is what you see here. And then you also have your other tabs to navigate, which are classwork and then the people tab. So pretty easy in terms of navigation for students and parents once you enter a classroom. So again, the stream is gonna be that home screen that you see when you enter a classroom. And you're gonna find announcements here, any assignments, and everything is gonna be posted with the most recent postings going to the top and then scrolling down to see some of the later postings. If there's any work that is gonna be due soon, you will see that over here on the left. If the teacher has enabled for students to post uh, questions or comments, they would have the option here to click and to share something. And then if there are um, announcements, those are listed here as well. So the teacher can, uh, post reminders for students about things that are coming up, reminders for homework, 
in addition to assignments showing up here on the screen. All right, moving on to the classwork tab. So all classwork, anything that's been assigned is gonna be listed here in the classwork tab. Um, over here on the left, teachers have the ability to organize things into topics. So they may organize things by units or by weeks, um, but be sure to check the topics here to help you navigate what it is that you're looking for. And then the assignments are listed underneath each topic. And if there is a due date assigned to that assignment, that will be visible here as well. There is also a link here to take you to Google Calendar. So again, if the teacher assigns a due date to something, the due date will also appear on the Google Calendar. And this can be helpful again um, for our older students, middle and high school, who are working between several different classes. That calendar can be helpful in keeping them organized. Um, I also wanna mention all of these Google apps are things that can be downloaded on a cell phone. So they could get reminders on their cell phone as well. They could even download the Google Classroom app on their cell phone just to have quick access in addition to using their school issued Chromebook. So the assignment page, when you click on view assignment, you will see something similar to what is listed below. So any assignment details will be listed here. So again, assignment title and due date. If the teacher put any instructions to go along with that, those will be listed here. Um, point value, if they assigned a point value to the assignment. And then also if there's any attachment. So if you look over here to the right, you'll see there's a Google Doc attached to this assignment. So this lets the student know this is where they need to click to access that quiz to complete their work. And then down below where this attachment is at, we have the add or create. So the student could also click this button and upload a file that they already created to turn it into the assignment. And then down below in blue is our turn in button. So when they are finished, they can click that to submit the assignment and the teacher will be alerted that the student has turned in the assignment. So just some tips and tricks here for turning in assignment. So again, if you are using the file that the teacher attached for you, like we showed on the previous screen, you're just gonna look for that blue turn in button to turn that assignment in. To attach something that's already created, once you click that add or create, these are your options here for attaching things. So they can attach something from their drive, they could add a hyperlink, they can upload a file, and then this is also where they could go and create a new document within that assignment and then turn in that original document to that assignment directly. So Google Classroom just does a really nice job of keeping things organized for both the teacher and for the student as well. Um, you all, students also have the option to mark something as done. So depending on what file type it is, sometimes they'll have this option here to mark it as done. This is the same thing as um, turning in an assignment. And then also students can go in and unsubmit. So if they hit that turn in button too soon and they need to go back and make any adjustments to the assignment, they can hit unsubmit and that will give them access to their documents again to make any necessary changes and then they can click that turn in button to resubmit the assignment to their teacher. So now we're gonna talk about Google Meet and GoGuardian. So if you were with us last year during remote learning in the spring, you probably are familiar with Google Meet. It is our video communication service. Um, it is similar to Zoom, if you are familiar with Zoom. And all of our Crete Moni students and staff have access to Google Meet through their school Gmail accounts. This is the platform that teachers will use for live lessons for presenting to students, but also for meeting with small groups. So in terms of our workspace, when teachers are conducting a Google Meet, again, we wanna make sure that the students have a designated workspace like the kitchen table or a desk and make sure that it's in an area where they can focus and not be easily distracted. Um, and the bed is not a good workspace for students, so we want them seated somewhere and upright and dressed appropriately in shirt and pants. And if you have other family members or multiple students in your household 
who might be sharing a workspace consider headphones so that they can focus on their meeting and not hear any background noise. And again, I mentioned this before, but it's a good idea to have paper and pencil next to your students so that if they need to write things down, they can. Um, anytime I'm in a meeting, I have that paper and pencil next to me so I can jot down anything that I need to remember. All right, when your student is entering a Google Meet, there's two methods here that teachers can use to invite students to a meet. So the first one, and this is the most popular one that our teachers will use, is to just use a link that's directly in Google Classroom. So up at the top in the banner of the Google Classroom, there's actually a meet link here that the teacher can turn on and off. So your teacher may say nine o'clock is gonna be our reading lesson and you're gonna join through our Google Classroom. The students would just come here to click to access that. Um, the other option that some of our teachers may use is to create a calendar event and invite the student to that event. And so this is what the event would look like. And there is this big blue button here that says join with Google Meet. And you'll notice up above is the time and the date and that can be found in the Google Calendar. And again, by clicking both of those, it's gonna take you to your next step to join the Google Meet. So preparing for a Google Meet, students always wanna make sure that they mute their microphone before they enter and that their camera is on unless they've been directed otherwise by their teacher. So over here in this image, Right now, this is what the microphone button will look like when it is muted. And to unmute, you just click that button. This button here, the red phone, this is to hang up or to leave the meet. And then this is to control the webcam. So to turn this on or off. So right now, this webcam would be in the on position. Uh, it's important to note, um, if you accidentally click the button here to leave the Google Meet, you can go back and re-enter the meeting um, again, just using either the link from Google Classroom or from the calendar invite. Sometimes it's tricky and we click that wrong button on accident because it's close to the other two. Um, something else for preparing for the Google Meet, if there are any other documents that your teacher is going to be going over, have those open in a tab prior to the start of the meeting so that you are ready to go. So during the Google Meet, it's important that the students stay focused. So keep those distractions away from the Chromebook, such as the cell phone, so that they're not distracted by the cell phone and they're paying attention to the meet. Uh, again, if our teachers are conducting large group lessons, there's a couple of ways that students can let the teacher know if they have a question. So there is a chat feature in Google Meet. So over here, this will be on the right of the Google Meet, and there's just a button that says chat and the students can type a question and the teacher will see the student's name so they'll know who asked that question. And then something else that a lot of our teachers have taught our students to do is just to raise their hand so that they can see that on the webcam and then they can give the student the opportunity to unmute their microphone and speak. Um, again, take any notes that are needed and then when the Google Meet is over, close that browser tab to exit or you could also click that red phone button to leave the meeting. And then just to note, uh, recording, modifying, or distributing video from teachers' lessons is not permitted for our students. All right. So in addition to Google Meet, we have access to a tool called GoGuardian. And GoGuardian is a device management program for schools and for teachers. Um, we've had GoGuardian in our district for two years um, and you may or may not have heard your students talk about this, but this tool allows the teachers to monitor what the students are doing on their device from the teacher device during the school day. So teachers have the ability to do things like limit how many tabs a student can have open. They can close a tab if maybe a student is getting off task from the teacher website or from the teacher computer. Uh, they can lock the student screen if they need to. Uh, to, to draw their attention back to where it needs to be. So again, these are the features that we've had access to for the last couple of years, um, but we're really excited because GoGuardian has released some new features this year that are gonna be very helpful for remote learning. So one of the features is that students can lock or teachers can lock the students to their presentation screen. So when a teacher is giving a lesson, they can ensure that the presentation is the only thing visible on the student screen 
and the student can't close out of it. They can't go to any other tabs while they are locked. So I say that to you because if your student says Some, something's wrong, my computer's frozen, it may be that the teacher is locking them to the presentation to share a lesson. Um, another great new feature that we are so excited about is teachers can initiate phone calls through the computer um, to students for assistance. And the only thing the students have to do on their end is accept the phone call. Um, and it's important to note that these communication features through GoGuardian are all teacher controlled. So the students don't have the option to call the teacher. The teacher has to initiate that communication and then the students just accept that. So again, for that phone call, the teacher can choose a student or even a group of students if it's a small group that they wanna meet with. And as long as the student is logged on to their device, they will get a pop-up that says, Ms. Seifert is calling you, and then they have the option to accept or to decline the call. Um, the teacher, once the students accept the call, will be able to see the student's screen so they can assist them if they're having difficulty with an assignment. Uh, and the student's camera will be turned on by default. The teacher can turn that on or off and then also mute if they're doing something with a group of students and they wanna mute the microphone so they can um, teach before getting student questions. They have the ability to do that as well. So this is another really great tool in addition to Google Meet that our teachers will be using this year to help connect and assist our students. And again, we're just, we're so excited about it. All right, so we do have Chromebook distribution happening starting today. So today from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., and this is taking place in the high school parking lot. And this is for kindergarten, our elementary students who are first through fifth, our sixth grade students, and our ninth grade students to come and receive their Chromebook for any students that are registered. Um, this is a drive-through distribution, so parents, you will stay in your car the entire time and just visit certain stations. Um, please make sure that you have a photo ID and then also your student's ID number, and this information can be found in Family Access. And then if your student had a device from last year, you're going to be returning their old device and power cord so that you can receive your new device. Uh, and again, this is starting today at 1 p.m., and then it's continuing for the next few days. So tomorrow from 1 to 7 again, Friday from 9 to noon, and then Saturday from 9 to noon. So we hope to see you guys coming out in the next few days to get those Chromebooks and start the school year. So I know I've covered quite a bit of information this morning, um, and there may still be questions. So we do have a form for you to submit any questions, and here is the, uh, the URL to access that form. I'll leave that up here on the screen for a moment. Um, and we will collect any questions from this form and then make a remote learning FAQ to put on the district website, uh, just to help our parents as we begin the school year. And again, this presentation will be accessible later today on the district website so that you can go back and review this and view any of the links or videos that were in here. In addition to this recording, this recording will be on the district website as well. And then if you have um, any friends, any other parents that maybe weren't able to attend this morning session, we are doing another session tomorrow at 6 p.m. And again, it will be streamed here on YouTube. So thank you to those who tuned in this morning. Uh, I hope this was beneficial for you. I know our teachers are very excited for a great year and we are looking forward to a wonderful start to the 2020 school year. Thanks everyone for watching.